Welcome back, a CPS staff. In this third video, we're going to talk about editing some of the clips that we've already added to our project. And that means we're going to focus specifically on the options that you have for editing video and image clips. So we already saw a couple of very simple things like the ability to select on an image and change how long it stays on the screen by selecting that right hand edge and dragging it out to add more time or dragging it in to add less. But there are so many more things you can do to edit a particular clip when you double click on it. So I'm going to start here with this clip of me that was captured by my webcam in the previous video. And I'm going to place my cursor here on it and double click and it's going to open a set of editing tools that apply specifically to a video clip. So the types of editing tools that you're going to have will change depending on the type of clip that you click on. In this case we're looking at editing a video so we see options like transform, crop, audio and so on. So let's start here at the top with transform and let's talk about what we can do with each of these uh, different options for editing a video. The first one is uh, the ability to change the scale or position. And this is actually a perfect example in using this type of clip here. Uh, this video was captured with what I referred to as that picture in picture effect where we had my presentation behind and then the video clip of me was placed much smaller much less prominent in one of the corners of the screen right there and you'll see right now the scale has it way down here at 0.33 and that is because the image doesn't fit the whole screen if we drag this up or we choose something like fit you'll see that now it's going to be more prominent in the center of the screen but now we've lost the picture and picture effect and that's why it immediately sets it down at that point three I can also decide where I want this particular video clip to be on the position in the screen depending on where it is going to be hiding the least content in my presentation so if I built my presentation with a lot of empty white space in the upper right hand corner I can drag this up to the upper right hand corner and that's where the clip of me in the picture in picture will play on the screen and therefore I won't be covering up any of the important content captured in my presentation. Once again at any time while I'm editing this if I want to see what I'm creating I've got my play button here in the player and I can take a look and decide whether or not I'm happy with the position of that and whether or not it is covering any of the content as I said that I don't want it to cover. Some additional options that we have here under transform we have the ability to flip the picture over so get that mirror image effect we can even rotate it if we want me to be sideways or upside down on the screen we can dial down the opacity and make it slightly transparent so that we can see whatever was in the presentation behind and then we have fade and blurred background options here. Blurred background is going to blur the presentation that is behind me, not the actual background behind me. So be, be aware of that one. Now let's move on and let's talk about crop. This again is a great example for cropping this particular image. If I reset it, I did crop it a moment ago when I was practicing for this. If I reset it, what you're going to see is that when I captured this video, there was just some stuff on the cabinets and countertops behind me. It doesn't necessarily add anything to my video. So this crop ability allows me to get rid of some of that white noise in the background behind me and just focus on me. It also allows me to take up a little bit space, a little bit less space on the screen here since this is that picture in picture and I want my students to be able to focus on the presentation behind me. If I return to transform I can now drag this back into the corner so that it isn't covering any content before returning to crop to make sure that I have removed as much of that uh, clip as I would like to. 
So now let's turn our attention to our next menu option here, which is audio. Audio will show you the current volume level for any audio that is attached to this clip, and it gives you the ability to turn it up if it's too soft, turn it down if it's too loud, and even take it all the way down to zero, which will completely mute the audio. So now you just see my face. I look like I'm talking, but nobody hears a thing. So all kinds of options here with audio. The default was set right here around 100 and again I can turn it down just a little bit if I still want the audio there but it was just too loud for uh, the effect in the video I can adjust that here let's turn our attention to our next menu option animations this is super cool animations is the ability to for you to use a very very simple tool to get a phenomenal effect that's just going to blow your students mind when we look at our options here in animation it says to create an animation choose your start and endpoint and then we have two menu options underneath that that is just start position and end position and then just scale and position really really simple if we look at end position it looks exactly the same so what we're creating is an effect in which either the size of the clip or the position of the clip is changing throughout the time that it is playing. For example, I'm going to start by talking about position. Right now, my video clip is in the upper right hand corner. If I select on end position and I drag this video clip to the lower right hand corner and then I click play, What you hopefully noticed as that was beginning to play is that that picture in picture was slowly moving down the screen. I told we video I wanted it to start in the upper right hand corner. I wanted it to end in the lower right hand corner. So what it does while the video is playing is it gradually moves or changes position. Our other option, if I reset that and take it back to the upper right hand corner. Our other option is to change the scale or the size of the video. So I can bring this video out. I can put it right here in the middle of the screen. I can make it nice and big so that I fill the whole screen. Everybody sees me. And then for the end position, I can leave that in the upper right hand corner nice and small. Now if I click play, what you're going to notice is that the video is gradually going to shrink in size and gradually move into the upper right hand corner. So let's click play to see it make that journey. Super simple way to add an effect that is very wow to your videos. You're simply choosing the starting size and a different end size to your clip, or you're choosing a starting position and a different end position to the clip. And then WeVideo takes care of the rest by mapping that journey that it's going to take as it changes size or position on the screen. Let's go ahead and just for a moment, I'm going to exit out of this because I did prepare an additional clip in order to look at our next menu option down here, which is keying. So I'm going to pretend I'm all done editing this and I'm going to click done. One of the things that you'll find in WeVideo's stock footage is imagery and videos that are available for green screen. So green screen is that effect where you remove a color from the video that's in the front so that you can see what's behind it. So I added a little green screen clip here on top of our slow panning across that fall foliage on the hillside and looking up into the trees that we added in our very first video. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on my green screen effect right here and I'm going to return to the menu option that we were about to go to a moment ago when we were editing and that's what's known as keying. Color keying is what we normally refer to as green screen. When I select on color keying once again the menu option is super simple here. It basically just asks me 
what color do you want to take out? So if I select on my eyedropper here and I move over to my player and I click right on that vivid green, it's going to make that particular portion of this image or video transparent. Now when I click play, we see that we are still panning across the hillside, but we're doing it as though it were on this billboard at the side of the highway instead of uh, seeing that all by itself. And that's a green screen effect that's done with keying. Now again, you have all kinds of stock footage that you can borrow from WeVideo to do green screen, but you can also record your own with something like a, a green tablecloth um, works great and then that can allow you to remove some of the content that's in the foreground so that you can see what is behind it. Let's turn our attention to our next menu option which is called color. Color allows you to change some very basic properties such as brightness, contrast, saturation, temperature, and so on. So if you have an image or a video clip that is very dark or very washed out, adjusting some of these things can prevent the need to re-record your uh, video or add a different image to get the effect that you're looking for. Our final option here is the ability to change the speed. Uh, Changing a speed can allow you to slow down how long uh, people see the steps that you're going through so that they can focus more on the details of every step that you added in your instructions. Or you can go faster to get through a series of steps very, very quickly in order uh, to get on to the next topic. Keep in mind that if you have audio included in the clip, when you speed it up, your presenter is simply going to talk faster and it's going to be harder to understand them or if you slow it down they're going to talk slower and it might not sound as good. So a great effect to use on silent video clips. It allows you to show a series of steps either very very quickly or slow it down so that they can pay more attention to each one of them um, but works much better for clips that do not include audio. All right when you are done editing a video or image clip you are going to want to choose done in the upper right hand corner to exit out of this editing option and be taken back to uh, your main editors window where you see your project bin, your player, and then your editing project across the bottom of the screen. So that's been a quick look at editing video and images by double clicking on them down here in your projects area, an option to change things like transformations, add animations, color key to get that uh, green screen effect, and so much more. I'll see you guys back in the next video where we're going to turn back to adding additional media. You'll see on our menu here down the left hand side there's all kinds of things we haven't addressed yet like audio and text and transitions. We're going to pick those up in the next video so I'll see you guys back in a little bit.